Welcome back, survivors. If you've made it this far, then you're not just looking for safety, you're looking for answers. Tonight, we sit down with Clifford Reynolds, a man who's seen more of the end of the world than most. His story isn't just about survival, it's about what it takes to keep going when everything you love is hanging by a thread. But before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If we can reach 25 likes, we'll release the next chapter even sooner. So, you're a journalist? She asked between bites of toast. Jin nodded, swallowing a mouthful of eggs. Yeah, I was... I mean I am. I've been trying to document everything that's happened since the outbreak, recording stories of survivors, keeping a record of it all. Clifford, seated at the head of the table, looked at Jin with a mix of respect and skepticism. That's a dangerous job these days, most folks are just trying to stay alive. I know, Jin said, meeting Clifford's gaze, but I think it's important. If there's ever going to be a future, people need to know what happened, how we got here. Clifford nodded slowly, his expression softening. I suppose you're right. Someone's got to tell the story. Jin took a sip of coffee, savoring the warmth. Where were you when it all started, Clifford? What happened that day? Clifford leaned back in his chair, his eyes distant as he stared out the window. I was on the road, heading home from a job. I'm a truck driver, been one for most of my life. I was out in the middle of nowhere, just me and the highway, when everything went to hell. Jin reached into his bag and pulled out his recorder, setting it on the table between them. Do you mind if I record this? Clifford looked at the recorder for a moment, then nodded. Go ahead, might as well get it all down. Jin pressed the record button, the small device emitting a soft click as it began capturing Clifford's story. It was supposed to be a routine run, Clifford began, his voice steady but tinged with an underlying tension. I was hauling a load of goods from one end of the state to the other, nothing special. I'd done that route more times than I could count, but that day, something felt off. The radio was full of reports about some kind of sickness spreading in the cities, but out there on the road, everything was quiet. Too quiet. He paused, taking a deep breath, as if steeling himself to relive the memories. I tried calling home, but the lines were down. No cell service either. That's when I knew something was wrong. Real wrong. I was still a few hundred miles from home, but I wasn't about to sit around and wait for whatever was coming. I put my foot down on the gas and started heading back, trying to get to my family. Jin listened intently, feeling the weight of Clifford's words. This wasn't just another story. It was a glimpse into the human experience, the raw fear and determination that had driven so many to survive. Clifford continued, his voice growing more intense as he recounted the journey. The highways were a mess, cars abandoned, accidents everywhere. People panicked, trying to get out of the cities, clogging up the roads. I had to take back roads, dirt paths, anything that would get me closer to home. And all the while, I kept thinking about June and Melissa, wondering if they were safe, if they even knew what was happening. His hand tightened into a fist on the table, knuckles white. I didn't know how bad it was until I pulled into a truck stop a few hours from home. It was chaos, people fighting over supplies, some already sick and attacking others. That's when I saw them for the first time. The zombies. They weren't like anything I'd ever seen, not like the movies. These things were fast, relentless. And there were so many of them. Jin's heart pounded in his chest as he imagined the scene, the terror that must have gripped Clifford, as he realized the full scope of the disaster unfolding around him. He could see the pain in Clifford's eyes, the lingering trauma of that day etched deep in his soul. I barely made it out of there, Clifford said, his voice dropping to a whisper. Had to leave everything behind, just jumped back in my rig and drove like hell. The only thing that kept me going was the thought of getting back to my family, making sure they were safe. He fell silent, lost in the memories of that harrowing day. The room was quiet, the only sound the soft crackling of the fire in the hearth. Jin glanced at the recorder, the red light blinking steadily capturing every word, every emotion. After a long moment, Clifford looked up, meeting Jin's gaze. You want to hear the rest? Jin nodded, his throat tight. Yes, if you're ready. Clifford took a deep breath, then nodded. All right, I'll tell you what happened next. But it ain't a pretty story. Jin leaned forward, ready to listen, 
ready to bear witness to the horror and hope that Clifford had experienced. As Clifford began to speak again, Jin felt a deep sense of responsibility settle over him. This was more than just a story. It was a piece of history, a fragment of humanity's struggle to survive in a world gone mad. And it was a story that needed to be told. Jin glanced around the small farmhouse where Clifford and his family had managed to carve out a life in the midst of the apocalypse. The farm was isolated, nestled deep in the rural south, far from the chaos of the cities. The isolation, combined with the land's natural resources, had allowed the Reynolds to stockpile food and supplies, giving them a fighting chance against the new world. The family's efforts to live like they used to, growing their own food, raising animals, and relying on the land, had made this small farm a rare haven in a world that had otherwise lost its sense of safety. But Jin knew that even in this refuge, the dangers were never far away. Raiders like the McLeans were always on the hunt, and the dead walked just beyond the property's borders. In this world, survival meant constant vigilance, and trust was a luxury few could afford. Yet, here he was, sitting with people who had saved his life, who had offered him a place at their table. It was a fragile hope, but it was hope nonetheless. Chapter 3 The Nightmare on the Road Clifford's hand trembled slightly as he lifted his coffee mug, the steam curling up in the cool morning air. Jin sat across from him, the recorder between them, its red light blinking steadily, capturing every word. Outside, the quiet farm was bathed in sunlight, but the peaceful setting did little to ease the tension in the room. Clifford took a deep breath, his gaze distant as he began to recount the horrors he had witnessed. It was like the end of the world came down in the blink of an eye, he said, his voice rough with the weight of the memories. One moment I was just another trucker on the road, and the next I was driving through hell. He paused, swallowing hard. I didn't realize how bad it was until I hit the truck stop a few hours from home. I needed to refuel, didn't have much choice, but when I pulled in, it was chaos. People were screaming, running for their lives. The infected, they were everywhere. Jin leaned in closer feeling the chill of Clifford's words seep into his bones. The image of that truck stop, a once ordinary place turned into a slaughterhouse, began to form in his mind. They were fast, Clifford continued, his eyes narrowing as he relived the terror. That's the thing people didn't understand at first. These weren't the slow, shuffling zombies from the movies. No, these things moved like they were possessed. You'd see one of them, thinking you had time to get away, and the next second, they were on you teeth bared, tearing into you like a pack of wild dogs. He shook his head, his face pale. I saw people get ripped apart right in front of me. They didn't stand a chance. Once someone got bit, it was over. They'd go down screaming, and within minutes, they were one of them, turning on their own friends, their own family. Jin could feel the fear creeping up his spine as he listened, the horror of Clifford's story settling like a heavyweight in the room. This wasn't just a tale of survival. It was a glimpse into the pure, unrelenting savagery of the outbreak. Clifford's voice grew quieter, more haunted. The worst part was the explosions. Cars, trucks, everything was blowing up. People were so desperate to get away that they weren't thinking straight. They'd crash into each other, trying to ram their way through the crowd, and the whole damn place would go up in flames. He closed his eyes as if trying to shut out the memories. I remember seeing a minivan full of kids. The driver was trying to swerve around the chaos, but he lost control, slammed into a fuel tanker, this massive fireball, and then nothing, just smoke and screams. The images Clifford described were more than Jin could have imagined. The world hadn't just fallen apart, it had been torn to shreds in a frenzy of fire and blood. The reality of it, the sheer brutality, was almost too much to bear. Clifford opened his eyes again, staring down at his hands. I almost didn't make it out of there. My rig was surrounded. I could hear the infected clawing at the doors trying to get in. I thought that was it, that I was going to die right there, watching those things tear through the glass. His voice broke, just for a moment. But then, by some miracle, the rig next to me exploded. The blast knocked the infected back, gave me just enough time to get the engine started. I floored it, smashed through the gates, and kept driving until I couldn't see that place in my rearview mirror anymore. Jin swallowed, feeling the knot in his throat tighten. And then what? 
he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Clifford looked up, meeting Jin's gaze with eyes that held a thousand-yard stare. Then, I kept going, didn't stop, didn't think, I just drove, trying to outrun the nightmare. But the truth is, you can't outrun it, it's everywhere. The words hung in the air, heavy with the weight of the horrors Clifford had endured. Jin felt a deep respect for the man sitting across from him, a man who had survived when so many others hadn't. But he also felt a cold dread, knowing that the story Clifford was telling was just one of countless others, a story of a world that had been consumed by darkness, where survival meant living through one nightmare after another. Clifford took another sip of his coffee, his hand still trembling. That was the day I knew. Things were never going back to the way they were. No matter how far I drove, how many miles I put between me and that truck stop, the world I knew was gone. Jin nodded slowly, the reality of Clifford's words sinking in. This wasn't just a story about the past. It was a warning about the future. A future where the line between life and death was razor thin, and where every day was a fight to survive. And as Clifford's story came to a close, Jin couldn't shake the feeling that the worst was still yet to come. And that's where we leave Clifford for now. But you know, in this world no story is ever really finished. Just like the horrors lurking outside his farm's borders. If you want to hear the rest, help us reach 25 likes and we'll dive right back into the madness. Don't forget, survival isn't just about staying alive. It's about remembering the stories that got you this far. Until next time, survivors, stay safe, stay sharp, and whatever you do, keep listening.